All right, Islam, and welcome to Sisters Standing on Law. This is your host, Anita L., along with my co-host, Raz Marani Bay. Islam, peace and love to all. Islam. As I said. All right. You sound great. Oh, wonderful. (laughs) Thank you for the wonderful gadget for the nerds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you and sound you know great. It's charging. It's, charging. it's it, I have it charging and Bluetooth for speaker at the same time, so you can't beat that. You know what I mean? Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, all right. For those of us, those of you who may not know, we are like so big on gadgets always looking for some gadget that will help us do what we do better and easier, which is not always easy. So it's, a lot of times we're always in trial test mode, you know. Um, so, so sometimes we might call in or we might be at the class and we sound kind of uh, not, not the greatest, because we got a new gadget we're testing now because, you know, you can't test it out unless it's live, unfortunately. Yes. So sometimes we'll find that, oh, uh, this is not working, and we have to do a quick swap to something else that we know works. So um, so we're always looking for way quality better. So that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, in the nick of time. So, I know. I'm, oh, my God, I'm so glad uh, you called me before the show so I can tell you, hey, you got a package. front <laughs> there. Yes, indeed. Uh, in the nick of time, so that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is Sister Standing on Law. As you know, it's targeted towards the sisters because it is so past time. Sisters, it's past time for you to wake up, but, you know, I can understand why it hasn't happened, because there's a lot of things. It's like plans within plans within plans within plans within plans. And every plan is designed to ensure that mother never wakes up. So, first, your mind, I, I call it the mind has the mind of mother has been warped. Once the mind of mother is warped, there is a continuous plan to keep it warped. Yeah. And so you really need, it's like you really, really have to, from that perspective, us coming back through many incarnations, stronger, with a little bit more information to overcome some of the things from the previous incarnation. You know, a lot of times when we look at uh, incarnations and karma because they go hand in hand, <clears throat> you know, they put this stigma on it and, 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 and they, 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 they make it seem like, oh, my God, you know, your karmic debt is to suffer. But really your karmic debt is to learn your lesson. It's not to suffer. Suffering, mm-hmm. unfortunately, for many of us, is a mechanism that is like a jolt of electricity to wake you up. Sometimes the jolt doesn't work. It's like trying to resuscitate somebody who has um, gone into cardiac arrest and their heart has stopped beating. You get the jolt and you may start beating again or you might just continue, uh, uh, you know, living the life of a dead person. So that's what things things come into our lives to help us wake up. And and it is for us, you know, to make that decision, however it happens, to wake up. And it's not about blaming you for what you did or you did not think is a lesson. And the only reason that we're here is to have these experiences experiences so that we can learn our lessons, so that we can grow and ultimately 
<clears throat> migrate back with the whole. That's the only purpose. That's it. There's nothing else. <laughs> That's all there is. So um, this is this 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 particular subject that we're going to talk about today. You know, I, it, it it was inspired a show that I watched, and as I was watching it. <clears throat> I realized, and I know we've talked about this before, I realized that many mothers, you know, even some of us that are, that, that are alleged to be awake, we consistently do this. Like um, the, 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 the syllabus of today's class reads, Mother, wake up. Municipal employees are not there help you. Employee is every employee that is not a state employee. It doesn't matter what they want to call themselves. Uh, the, 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 the school, they, the, those are municipal employees. The, the police, those are municipal employees. The mayor, that's a municipal employee. Um, the, 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 the so-called child protective service, that's a municipal employee. The um, uh, uh, you know, all of these so-called social services programs, all of them, almost all of them are run by municipal. And we got to know who is who and what is what. And so often we get everything mixed up. And if you can't identify who is attacking you, you can't. Your case. If you were to submit a case and you have not identified the true attacker, your case will be dismissed. Because the first law of the first rule of law is all parties must be identified. And you can put the name, the the ad the address, the, the title of an employee, but if it is not the correct employee, your case will be dismissed. We find ourselves, situations we find ourselves in can only be resolved when we unite and talk about our healing, our situation, and come up with a healing. Foreign municipal employees, I'm going to say it again, foreign municipal employees in all capacities will never, nor were they ever set up to help unite the family. They are there to profit off of you. So wake up and stop calling employees. You know, it wasn't too long. I have a friend who's um, um, a, a much older than I am, and she grew up near the area that they call, near the Brooklyn Corporation. And she used to tell me back when she was a young girl, which wasn't long ago, all right, nobody ever called the municipal employee because they handle things within their community, within the community, which in, in our case is within the family. Somebody is um, – putting their hands on you, whether it's male or female at that time, it was heavily predominantly males putting their hands on females. Somebody sat down and had a conversation with you. And if you Mm -hmm. didn't take heed to the conversation, then the next phase would be implemented. And I think you all know what the next phase would have been. It would have been (laughs) implemented. Um, If you had a situation where, um, you know, you had to go to work and you needed somebody to take care of your child, the, you would get together within the family and somebody would take care. The family and the community is the same thing, all right? So stop calling it a community because that's not what it is. got to begin to take down those walls of separation because when we use words like community, that's a separation. We're family. So um, if you needed somebody to, to watch the baby, you had somebody within the family, within the neighborhood, who you could go to. 
mother, if you was pregnant and you was due to have your baby, you would call somebody within the neighborhood, within the family, to assist you with that. We never went outside of the family. But over the years, these very municipal employees have mentally mm-hmm. conditioned us to go outside of the family. And once you go outside of the family, for example, if you take your child to the emergency room and that child innocently fell down and broke their wrist, which I have known to happen, they will call their other the other division of the municipal corporation to, and they will come in and, and ask you questions and investigate, oh, are you abusing your child? And oh, oh, you, you, we, they're, they're not even. In some cases, they're not even asking you. They're just coming in and they're swooping down like the vultures that they are, and they're taking your child because yep. their objective is to generate revenue. So whenever you, whenever you call a municipal employee in any capacity, their objective is to generate revenue. So if you take them to these municipal hospitals, because all these hospitals are municipal, if you take them to the municipal hospital, they're going to set a chain of, an, a, 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 a chain in action or a chain of motion. What is it? A motion? I can't remember the word. It's going to set a, a sequence of events. There we go. It's going to set a sequence of events in motion that is going to be detrimental to our family. If you That's take right. them to these institutions they call schools, all right, nowadays yeah. they're asking the children inappropriate questions that really they're not capable of answering, And but it's, that's going to set in motion a sequence of events that's going to be detrimental to the family. If you have if you, some sort of uh, 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 relationship with either the son or the son, the daughter, and you don't know how to have a conversation and and remedy the situation, or you just don't know how to walk away and cool off, and you inadvertently call the municipal employee, they are going to step in, and it is going to start a sequence of events that's going to be detrimental to the family. And all of these things is designed to generate revenue. And the only reason that they happen is because we keep calling them. Mm-hmm. We keep calling yeah. them, and every single time that you call a municipal employee for anything, it demonstrates that you are incompetent, can't even take care of your own affairs. And everybody is being set up. Mothers, y'all are being set up. You, you're being getting a false sense of power because they're saying, hey, if this if this guy treats you bad, call us and we'll come to your aid. And so what do you do? Because you've been giving a false sense of power to call the municipal employee whenever that son don't do what you want him to do instead of just letting him go. Let him go. Because you ain't supposed to be controlling nobody like that. Just let them go. But, no, you don't want to let them go because you're wallowing in this false sense of power. So you call the municipal employer. Next thing we know, you're both getting carted off. And the baby is the baby is being taken by the other arm of the municipal corporation, and you thought you had some power. <laughs> And the sons, you're in the you're in you're in the same situation, but only from a different dynamic, because mothers know how to push your button. And guess what? So do the municipal employees. They know how to push your button. You might have the greatest thinking capacity till your buttons are pushed. So the objective is to push your button, because if we can push your button, not we, not women only, women and municipal employees. If we can push your button, your thinking capacity is going to go right out the window, and then they're going to be making some change off of you. They ain't even making change. They're making serious notes off of you because you keep calling them Mm -hmm. or you keep falling into situations 
where they are called. And as long as people keep calling them, they will have a job. Mm. And if, if they have a job, that means that we cannot, we cannot, we cannot handle our affairs. Mm-hmm. If you have a whole bunch of municipal employees running around dictating what you can and cannot do, and you're calling them, it demonstrates that oh, it, 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 the 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 the, uh, the evidence is you got a whole bunch of employees, municipal employees running around. Why are they running around? Because the people don't know how to handle simple issues, and they have lost the rules. Whatever that family, it stays in this family. No, it don't stay in the family no more. Now it's the foreign municipal employee's business. And 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 nobody is afraid to tell it. They on Facebook telling it, they on Instagram telling it, they on Snapchat, whatever whatever social media construct is out there, they on it telling it. And so and we're so ignorant. These municipal employees have never done anything that was beneficial to the people. So you have to ask yourself, why is there a Facebook? Why is there an Instagram? And why is there a Snapchat or whatever else they got going on? Why are they there? Because they know that they can push a button. You're going to get up on these damn Facebook, these social media things, and you're going to put all your business out there. They ain't got to investigate. They ain't got to hunt. They can just go right to Facebook. They don't even have to try and figure out who you are because you put your picture of your whole family out up on Facebook with the name and the, and the and where they live and what they're doing at every moment of the day. So if you say something that they feel that they can use to generate revenue, they can take your little Snapchat, your little Snapchat, your little Instagram, or your Facebook, and they can make a copy of it, and now they got the evidence. And who gave them that? You did. You did. So, you know, we have got to stop and look beyond today. And we have to broaden our perspective because these people are not your friends. Just because somebody created a Facebook doesn't mean that's your friend. Let me go out there and put all my business because the family rule was all family business stays within the family. Now it ain't in the family. It's all around the world. And anybody can use it to generate income off of your foolish behind. And how did they get to do that? Because they know exactly how to push uh, the button of the Asiatic population. Exactly. Facebook is a success because of the ego of the Asiatic population. And who's sure. suffering as a result? Sure. They can track your every movement. Oh, I'll be going. I'll be going to the train at twelve oh three. I just got off the train at 12.23. I'm walking down the street. Pick that person up. They done said something on Facebook. They're going to be they gonna be at McDonald's at 12.49. Go pick them up. And they'll be sitting there waiting on you. And ask them some questions about somebody else where they can't say or why. And say, exactly. Or asking you some questions about somebody else because don't nobody know how to keep their damn mouth shut. And they're telling all the family business, and it's doing nothing to heal the family. And if you think these foreigners are going to help you to heal the family, think again. That's our job. The only thing that they will do, and this is all they have ever done, was use the fact that we are psychologically damaged to generate income. So if if we're going to change anything, if that's going to get changed, it's up to us. It ain't up to nobody else. They are not our family. I don't care who is sleeping with who. 
modern Europeans are artificial people, we are natural people, and the two will never mix. Why are they artificial? Because they were created artificially. That's right. <laughs> so now we have to be clear on who is who and what is what. I don't care who is sleeping with who. We have got to stop allowing foreigners to use us to generate revenue. And for that to happen, we are going to have to accept some hard truth. And we're going to have to make change and act accordingly. And until we can do that, they will continue to generate revenue off of us. They will continue to snatch us up off the street at the appointed time that we done told them we would be at on Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. They will continue to kidnap, uh, abduct, abduct our children and hold them until they have sufficiently damaged them because many of us don't even know how to get them out of those situations because mothers don't want to take responsibility for their eggs and they be passing it off on the sun. And as long as you pass it off, these modern Europeans know true biology, even if you don't want to accept it. So as long as mother don't want to step up to the plate and save her egg, that egg will forever be wallowing out there. This is what they know. This is what we need to accept, and we need to stop allowing our ego to dictate our actions. Like the prophet said, draw a circle around your passions and square up your conduct. Roll up your sleeves because we got work to do. Slum? <laughs> wow, that's slum. But you know what? We need to go into... Um, since you brought it to the table, and it needs to be just as you've expressed how um, we uh, um, just uh, are, are putting all of our business out on these um, social medias, which is not to our benefit at all, um, to the detriment of the family, facing ego, facing wanting to be accepted, et cetera, like that, and not. And, and that wanting to be accepted is because you don't really know who you are at all. You don't understand what the family dynamics are, nor do we know the history and the her- or the heritage and history or heritage and her story, because that's really what this is about. You get, better believe this is never about um, his story as much as it is about her story, which is ambassadorized into what we call history, because everyone comes to the womb. At all civilization, that's how the thing goes down from the beginning to the end, all right, back again. That's a fact, and that's not going to change. Um, but you said that that because mothers aren't being responsible in claiming her eggs, that was a part, that that was also a part of this system um to uh, uh, that they use where you call them for this and that and the whole bit like you, you just explained um, and then getting into the fact that mothers are not responsible and again it's not about blame it's about the system that has set it up this way and if your eyes are closed you cannot see therefore you don't know right. what, what's being said exactly so with that also came in the uh, recent generations and plans social engineering plan um, is for, because you're not taking responsibility, you give it off to your son so they take an absolute advantage of that, and that's why they snatch the baby from you and give and, son, and will give them to her son, because they already know. So I need you to, I would like for you to um, just explain that a little more, like, just as you explained how calling 911 and they're looking at you, you call them because you think uh, uh, you know, someone's done something to you, and they look. All they're doing is sizing up and seeing. Well, let's see, how can we make finance off of both of them? The one that called, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. the other one, and anything else that shows up. You know what I mean? How do we make finance off of them? And they create these things that are illusions, because that's the biggest thing that we must understand is they have created illusions. Um, so you could go up. Uh, how the system is working where this false 
claim of the son of the child uh, of her egg, how that system has worked as well. Because you kind of stop there and say, and that's why they're doing that. But how that is working with the family services, all those crazy services, and why? Well, what we have to recognize is everybody has a function. And there's certain things can't do that. But the whole objective here is to um, warp, I call it warping the mind. It's really psychological damage. I'm going to use that word because it it, it, it impacts, it, it creates the appropriate impact. Mother has to be psychologically damaged. She is the key. She is the prize. So what? people have been told the truth of the matter is that her egg is just in her ovary. She came here with them egg in the ovary. She already came here with a nation in her womb. Probably Noble Drew Ali said that. Science supports it. So that means whatever she has in her ovaries, it, it's going to come out of her. Ain't nobody putting jack shit in her. Them ovaries came here with her. So if we damage every one of them eggs in her ovaries will be psychologically damaged. So now they and and what is gonna come out of mother is eventually, you know, based on her lack of information, she's gonna build a son. And because they study us and they know that the you know, sons a lot of times run on ego. It's not to put you down. Mothers run on ego too. But sometimes when a mother has a child and her up, sons don't have the capacity to have a child. Even though people are telling you you had a child. You didn't. You don't have a womb. You didn't carry nothing in no womb, and you didn't bring nothing out of no womb. So um, there's nothing that's going to wake you up unless your mother woke you up. or well, yeah, Unless your mother woke up and gave it to you, and, it, and in Chapter 2, that's called giving you light. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't get the light after the fact, but a lot of times, harder because you've been so psychologically damaged because you came out of somebody that was psychologically damaged. So that means okay. that all of the damage that your mother had, you have. And you got to come out from under that. It ain't impossible, but the chances are very slim. Unless you really take Studying, which is why back in the day, the sons would join a monastery or they would go off by themselves so that they can get a grip of their mind and their body and that ego. They can put a, put a noose around that, knee, that, that ego and tie it down. People are not doing that today. People are damn near living on top of each other, and there's nothing wrong with living on top of each other, living with each other in close proximity as long as you have cut out of yourself those things that are detrimental to the, you have not done that, then you are going to participate, whether you are aware of it or not, in tearing down the family. And you're going to call all of these municipal employees in one way or another to help do one thing. Because you got to remember, mother is the prize because everything comes from mother. We know exactly where the sun comes from. 
the son comes from the mother. But nobody knows where mother comes from. But that, and that's why she is the divine being. That's why she is the pride. And that's why if you can damage the mother, you will forever create future revenue generators. And then whatever she produces, they can then be susceptible to participate in the program of psychologically damaging not just mothers, but their brothers as well. which will ensure revenue generators for the municipal employees. They know that they are assured of a job because we don't know how to control ourselves. They made sure of that. And they have given us, they have, they have uh, uh, boosted up the ego, and I hate to say it, son, but you guys are the target market. That's why I try to be so heavy on you, not just you, but mother, but more so on you because they come in after you because they know that you, sons, a lot of times it's, it's ego. You And you, are and e, you always coming for me. You're always coming for the sons. No, tell me if your homeboy comes to you and says something derogatory if you ain't going to go to blow. You, you, if, I mean, cause look, you hardwired for fight, and there's a reason for that, but you're hardwired for fight, so somebody steps to you wrong. Somebody step on your feet because you're ready to fight. These, these municipal employees, they already know that if they, if they handle you a certain way, you're going to pop off. And that's going to be a revenue. They're, they're going to generate revenue, like, immediately. You're not going to stop and think, how's the family? You know, my mother, she's sick. She can't take no more. You, you're not going to have those thoughts. Not that you don't love your mother or whatever. It's just that ego has taken full control. They count on that. This is why Prophet Noble Juali said, draw a circle around your passion and wear up your conduct. Because if you don't, they will enlist your services to take mother out, and you won't even know it. <laughs> you can sit here all day long and say, I love my mama, I love my mama, I love my mama, but you participating in taking down your mama, and you won't even know it. So insidious and slick is their plan. So it and it's not to say that you are you're stupid. I said slick and insidious. And no matter how horrible our sons might be, or how horrible our sons may behave, that we our people do not have that inherent quality of Humanity. It, 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 there's a lot of sons out there who've done some inhumane things, and because of that, it has turned on them mentally. Because we are not built for that, which causes another revenue stream. Because now we can put your, now what the, the municipal employees will do is they'll let you go out there all manner of tenuous things to your mother and your brothers. They'll let you do it. And then they'll snatch you up when you go to, once they've had enough, once, once you know you're on the last tail of producing revenue for them, they'll snatch you up and put you in a mental institution. Mm-hmm. Because for them, it's all about generating revenue. It's, for yeah. them, it's not personal. It is their survival. And let me just let everybody know, they're not doing this because they're so smart. Mm-mm. They do this because this is what we did to them. And they remember what it feels like to be in the position of never-ending slavery. They remember, 
and they will do anything never to return. So we have some atoning to do for that. So, you know, a lot of times when we say things like, yeah, you know, Europeans ain't going to be here, the sun is going to kill them, and everybody is like, rah, rah, rah. No, we can't take that approach either. We have to have some sort of empathy because none of this would be going down. Can you with the enslaving of people? Mothers may have started it, but sons, y'all continuing it. And you don't even know that you're being, your aid is being enlisted to make sure that mother never wakes up because if mother wakes up, all of this revenue generating shit is done. Because yeah. she, she ain't going to have it. When mother is in her right mind, she's not going to allow the profiting off of human suffering any longer. That's right. And that's why she's got this. That's why everybody, for whatever reason, that's why modern Europeans will tell all manner of lies to enlist the aid of not just the son, even mothers, against mothers. Yep. Because they, they, they think, and this is where we have to set them at ease, they think that once we return back to power, they're going to be slaves once again. And in the psyche of the sun is the same fear. Mm -hmm. So we have to assure those who are not mothers that that's not going to happen. It can't happen again. That is why we are where we are today. We won't be doing that again. And we got to start now because I'll tell you this. If we do not start now, some mothers, when that, when the, when the sun moves closer to the earth and burns up the modern Europeans, it's going to burn you up too. Because if you haven't figured out that energy shift is here, it's here already. The sun moved closer to the earth some time ago, and it's constantly moving closer to the earth. So if we do not clear out our closet and throw away all that useless baggage that's all wrapped up in ego, we're going to get burnt up too. Mm Because right now, our numbers are being taken out in large scale. Because we refuse to give it up. We refuse to let it go. And we don't have to do nothing. This is this is a plea to the nation. Do something. Because whether you do something or not, this is here. And it will be corrected. And if you don't correct yourself, you're not going to be here because you won't be able to take the energy. M- many people can't take the energy now. Some it's of the past symptoms. Current. Say that again. I'm saying, what are, and, and, you know, you're saying they can't take the energy now, but that also translates into their mental state and their emotional state mm-hmm. being affected. They can't take it. Mm-hmm. And definitely their physical health portion is 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 is, is uh, an example of how they can take it now. Mhm. That's yeah. That's right. It's a reflection. You know, universal law says that your inner world, your outer world, will be in direct portion to your inner world. Let's say that again. Your outer world will be in direct proportion to your inner world. What does that mean? Take a look at your take a look at your life. Take take stock of what is going on in your life right now. It is there because you didn't go within and do the necessary work to create a peaceful and harmonious existence for you. 
And as a result, instead of creating a peaceful and harmonious inner world, you created a chaotic inner world. And it is reflected in your outer world, which is why man's business is about reflection. Uh-huh. Because if we take the necessary time to reflect, you will see what you need to do for you. There's so many people out there that's on this martyrdom kick. Martyrdom meaning they want to be the next noble Juali. Oh, I saved my people. I saved my people. This is not this that's not your job. Your job, as the prophet so eloquently says, is to save yourself. <laughs> and if more people would focus on themselves, we would have legions of more waking up. Um, can I reiterate uh, briefly, because you're saying that this, this it, it, we're looking at the um, symptoms of the plan, and because we don't know the plan or the systematic plan, social engineering plan, there's no way we can fix anything. We All we do is keep following down the same rabbit hole as to mm-hmm. uh, where they go, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so we know because a lot of people, like you said, it's about the woman because, you know, all sons and daughters come from her, period. She's the quote-unquote human door, period. Um but when we talk about this, we talk about people say, oh, well, you know, it's the Willie Lynch, it's the this. Well, originally, the, that, those, those papers found in the laboratory about breeding was when we were breeding them. However, they, uh, uh, they adopted them and adapted them. And so the first thing was of the mind. It's, it's, I think it's seven reversals. Reversal of the mind into a, a frozen civilized state when you watch your child, especially your son, because they took the most, the most, uh, what they would identify as meanest and re- meanest and reckless. That means the true warrior that's protecting the family. That's what that means, all right? Doesn't mean mean, doesn't mean reckless. It means the true warrior or son who is, as you said, wired to protect. You're right. And even when you watch the Black Panther movie that just came out, whoever could fight the best sat on the throne. That was it. I mean, sat on the king's position because, uh, you know, and I re- re- reiterate again that some people say, well, it wasn't, it wasn't a, uh, there was no throne for her. She is the throne, and you came from her, and you were crowned. So you got to understand the spiritual and, you know, and, and the illusion that has been given as well. So, that so they took and reversed um, the mind by that horrible stuff that they did to your warrior son. Then they reversed the relationship because naturally, naturally, when you see this happening to uh, this this splitting of the arms and the legs and all different uh, uh, directions, that is definitely going to change your relationship over a period of planned time. Then you you're not gonna escape escape that. That's mental. Um, and then they reverse nature, um, uh, which they which is what it is a reversal of nature. And then they reverse the role. Now, reversing the role comes up under um, the roles and the positions. Reversing the roles and the positions. That's it, reversing the roles and then the position. And so when they reverse the position, that comes up under your fake belief about marriage. Uh, in, a more, in a more modern time, I would say, because the roles were reversed, the positions were reversed right there. And that wiped out mother, and she's the one who actually is the inheritance. And, and, and because it's inheritance, let's get real. It's not in his sense, it's inheritance, heritage. They're wiping that out. And that's what this is about. That is what it's about. And, again, they're afraid to ever have it go back 
to nature. They're not doing what's natural. That's why we are not naturally uh, dying or passing forward. We're, we're having unnatural diseases and, and, and sicknesses. I mean, what else do we need to, to, to have proof of that, all right? Um, so by that being the premise of that, this is why um, we have to understand that we, we, we have got to see now, as you mentioned earlier so eloquently, about how they have these services, family services, 911 services, everything to get into your life and to have you pitch yourself against your, your mother, your, your, your daughter, your son, your family, just period, pit against family, period, destroying the family. And again, I'll, I'll say again, and even in the, uh, uh, the recent movie, uh, Black Panther, they showed you that, that even though you're a family, you, the, 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 the guy uh, was raised not in family culture. So whatever he had with him was misused and abused because he was not raised in family with family culture. That's us. That's what it is. Um, if we want to fix this, we have to know what the problem is. The resolution is what life is about. It's not about the problem or the obstacle. It's about how you're going to resolve it. So what we do, what I find that we do all day long because we're passive. And now, and you know what, this I mean, I understand when Prophet Noah Girardi said, hey, yo, we, you know, you need to be active, not passive. We're passive in that we all day long talk about the symptoms of what these municipal employees and municipalities do. All day long we talk about what they do. If it wasn't for what they do, there wouldn't even be a problem, no would there, if that wasn't happening. So we do that all day long. And we don't take the time to really investigate what's really going on. So we're giving you what's really going on here and what and what direction you need to go in to make this change. And it's got to be intrinsically somewhere in you. Uh, look into your chart. Look where Neptune is. That's illusion and deception. And see where it is. And that would be one of the main things that's keeping you or keeping you from seeing the reality, which starts with yourself, really. Um, or maybe it's what's helping you to be able, for some of us to be able to see the reality instead of the illusion. So all of it starts with, as you said, knowing who you are and saving yourself, period, because you can't come and help someone else when you got a, a, when you, you got a leg yourself, you know what I'm saying? Um, so we have to become whole in that respect. Um, I want to add something else, but I'm going to add it later, so I yield for now. All right, you know, you know, um, there was a movie that came out hmm, maybe two years ago, and it actually um, embodied what we talk about. All right. Um, remember that movie, Chirac? Chirac, yes. Chirac. Yes. Mother, mothers all around the world united for one cause. That was to regain peace. Mm-hmm. And any sister who wasn't down for the cause, got handled. There wasn't too many of those sisters, but that movie basically is telling you what has to happen for us to, you know, have peace once again on this North American continent and for the darkness to dissipate because in every, um, what do they call it, Masonic temple, the north gate is always dark. You go to yeah. any Masonic temple, they will tell you that. The north gate is always dark. What, where's the north gate? Why is it dark? The mother is asleep. 
In the movie right. Chirac, it shows you what happens when mother wakes up and spreads the word to her sisters. And all sisters around the world and daughter unite for one purpose. Interestingly, that movie didn't get much, uh, you know, publicity. Why? Detrimental to the cause of the modern European, or I should say detrimental to the municipal employee's cause. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of truth that was unveiled in that movie. And, but the biggest truth is that mother, this ain't going to change till y'all wake up. Uh, that's a fact. That's a fact. It ain't going to change until y'all wake up. Because when the mothers woke up, they said, let's restore the peace. They all sat down. They said, this is how the peace is going to get restored. And then they're transmitted around the world. Mm-hmm. But you know and what I'm saying? And it was done. But you know what I found interesting as we speak about our wonderful sons and their energy, their outgoing energy, they had to put, they had to, um, they had to get some acknowledgement of that energy. And and I don't want to say restrict it, but actually get it under control, as you mentioned earlier, so that they could see how they're working from um, with that, with that, with how they're wired. They're wired to be warriors. And look, mm-hmm. let's take a real quote. A lot of the sons today, you know, we could say loosely that, you know, they're not, they, they you know, sometimes you call them punks. But they, if you call, if you call each other, if they call each other that, they're ready to fight, right? Yeah. Right? That's, that's it. Yep. Yeah, right. So, right, so you don't have to not believe us. We, you know it's true. You know it's true. And so lassoing in some of that energy also included, and we got to be real careful on this one, honey. It also included lassoing in that sexual um, uh, 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 energy that you have that misplaced. And like, as you said, when they did um, uh, uh, the, the circumcision of, of, that goes back is when they circumcision to make you more sensitive to the whole sexual thing. Because that was the mm-hmm. reason, and that was done intentionally as well. So it, so that's in right. that movie, that's what they used. Not that they were denying that so much, but they were at the time because you got to check yourself because all of it works from that male ego. Many, it's not all, but many, certainly most, from that outgoing warrior conquering energy and turning it in to conquer your own family. And and the mother and women and then that turns into just having a blatant disrespect for for that and still working from the sexual conquering thing. So they had to in that movie say, No, 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 we gon we're gonna put an end to this. This ain't the this ain't the role, this ain't the way to go, you know, at all. Mm-hmm. And you had mentioned earlier about going inward and um going somewhere where you learn these things. Talk about son, learn these things regarding sex, sexual energy, et cetera, et cetera, like that. And it has to be worked both ways because now it's permeating into the system. She thinks that our only duty is to just lay down and have sex. Well, listen, that's a powerful creating energy. You can't just lay down with anything and have sex and then wonder what you what entity, whether it's a physical baby or or on or, 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 or you know, on scene that you didn't create some sort of energy entity that orbits around you. No. Nah. And then, therefore, is into society. So it's a misuse. It's an absolute misuse. So in that movie, they definitely corral that uh, or use that to help put things in order. And that's the check that is very difficult. But that's also part of the ego that they know exists and is being used against the family through uh, the sons. And that's why. That is why. I mean, think about it. You got... That, that, that's why in their family services, they got you because you're the daddy, right? No, you're a son. You were born a son. You're going to die a son. 
And if you don't come from that position and something's wrong with you, you're seeking some other titles, but you won't honor the one that you're born with. Now, let me just say this. Why do they say that we are a widow? Why do they say to you, in the Masonic orders, they certainly say it, or a son of a widow? Do you Have you ever asked why? No, but you'll go in there and you'll pay your allegiance to that and don't even know why they're saying it. Let me just give you a brief as to why, okay? Because, first of all, um, uh, women, not you, you do not give birth. You do not give birth. You do not give birth. Therefore, you do not give rights of birth or birth rights. A son does not, repeat, does not, repeat, does not do that. And if you think you do, then it's it's successfully, they've worked on it. They've worked, and it's working successfully. And you're working on not just ego, but absolute stupidity. And for mothers to allow this to continue, then so are they. But that is the plan. So if, if, if women give birth to both the male and female, and 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 and, and uh, he's a son. When she gives birth to him, he doesn't change and never not become a son. So that means all male, every last one of you are a son. Period. Born a mother, son, die a mother, son. So you're a son of a widow because if all males are sons, then how could she ever really have a husband, which is a title of something that you may attain to do, but you never leave or lose the fact that you're a son. You may go into the title of being a husband, which really, honestly, means a house binder, which has been uh, misconstrued as well. Uh, but that's what it is. So, this, truly, she's a, she's a widow, and will always be. So let me see. Um, let me see. Uh, one more one more thing to put that into its perspective. Actually, that puts it into its perspective. The problem is, is there's no respect for the fact that you are that. There was one more portion where I wanted to mention. Um, but you know what? That's, 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 that's basically it. Um, uh, so, she, so she is definitely a widow. And you, are, you are definitely the son of a widow because you are, uh, she's the mother. She gives birth. You're the son. And therefore, this is why that is said. So your honor should certainly be due to that fact. But you search for something else that's not honorable enough for you, that title that you have at birth. But you run around talking about your birthright, your birthright. And you get who has given you those birthrights. It doesn't make sense. So they play on you for that. They play on that ego for that. That's all they're doing. They say, oh, you don't know that? Okay, well, let's see. Let us tell you now that this is your baby, and i tell you what you can do. We're going to set up a system where this is your baby, and it's not. Uh, well, they got the system where they take the child away from the mother, give it to you. They know that they already know you're already in their crux because they have no business being in your business in the first place. So this is, this is what is really, really going on, and it has to end. And... As you mentioned, it's not personal to them. They could give a damn about you, your mama, your baby, your daddy, your your sister, your brother, your aunt, nor or your uncle, or your cousin. It's all about revenue generated for them, period. And while at it, dividing the family. Islam, how do you? Why, you know... Um, it's, it's, um, always, it's always an issue of human rights violation, but the right party has to bring the claim and that party Mm -hmm. is mother. And if mother doesn't know then she can't bring no claim. This is a human rights violation. Human rights are for natural people. Civil rights is for artificial people or artificial mm-hmm. persons. Put it that way. So that's why 
you know, this is an international issue. And the, the only person that can handle this or bring this into the appropriate arena is mother because everything comes out of mother. Truth of nature and biology that everybody must accept. And it's all right if you don't want to accept it. And it's all right if you think that, oh, you, uh, Sister and Eve is crazy. She just don't like men. You know what? It's all right if you want to, you know, say slanderous things like that. That's fine because really what you're saying is I don't want to embrace the science. Yet I want to call myself a more scientist. Yeah, two don't go together. It's all right because it's not my lesson. I got it. I got this lesson already. It's your lesson, and it's up to you to get it or not. Whether you get it or not, that is your decision. But I'm going to tell you right now, If you choose not to embrace the truth, you are, like they said in the movie, Matrix, you're not one of us. You're one of them. (laughs) Uh That's that's no in between. Because now they already know that if you ain't getting on board with with, with preserving the seed, it's about the preservation of the family. Screw your ego and your personal feelings. That's not relevant. Preservation of the family. So if you don't want to get on board with preserving the family, then you will be used to tear the family right. down. I can guarantee you. And that's all there is to it. And if you constantly choose not to draw a circle around your passion, square up your conduct, and help to preserve the family, Mother Nature is going to take you out. By your own words, you will curse yourself. And that's Wow. That's not an E speaking. That is universal law, universal principles. Mm-hmm. And it ain't church. Today is the Sunday. That ain't church. That is Moorish science. And, and natural, that's, that's, that's universal science, which is what Moors are supposed to have right. under their belt and know. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely correct. So um, with that, let's open up the lines and take some callers, hear what people got to say. If you have a question, comment, concern, uh, press 1 on your telephone dial, and we will take the calls as we receive them. Uh, caller three one two two four eight. You're on the air. Oh, it's not a Um, yeah, I didn't know it was on air, but um, yeah, I like to um, give thanks to the whole platform. You know, just yeah, I'm just here. I'm um, listening. All right. So yeah, so, if, okay. I'll um, I'll hang up. You know, I'll get off the queue. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, okay. Once I unmute you, just press one on your telephone dial, and you'll come out of queue. After okay. Right, I unmute you. All right. Okay. Peace. All right. Caller nine five four four zero zero. You're on here. I apologize. I accidentally um, pushed the number one, but I'll um, I'll withdraw. All righty. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Sister Carol. Islam. Islam. Yes, it is. It's I, Islam, Islam mothers. I tell you, what what a show. It, it's just so informative. It's just, I feel it straight in my soul. And, um, you know, it's, it's really amazing. I mean, you touched on everything. Whew. You know, the old saying goes, I knew then what I knew now. Oh, my goodness, my children would have been raised so much differently. But I understand, especially from the teachings, that we come into this information when the time when we, when it's right for us. So, um, but um, it, it's just amazing, and and I agree with you 100% about being active. And sometimes when I'm when I'm out traveling, and um, and I just look at the, the the mothers, the young mothers, and the mothers to be. We definitely have to save the children. So uh, it's, 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 I'm in the store the other day, and uh, this little modern European child, she's just familiar in my garb, so dressed, you know, and she's just standing. And the father said. Oh, she, it's the color. She loves the colors. I said, yeah. I said, well, it represents who I am, my ancestors. I honor them each and every day, you know. But um, I'm going to, rather than share the story with you that I, I told a few the other day when I went to the holistic dentist. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, uh, uh, sister Anna, Anna L., I had um, uh, oral surgery done uh, earlier this week, and um and I searched and I searched. And you know when I tell you my, when my mom passed a week before she went into the hospital, my tooth fell out. I'm just sitting there at the house eating a tuna fish sandwich, and the tooth falls out. No pain, no anything. And, and I, as a child, I used to hear all these old say My mother and my grandmother had all kinds of sayings when certain things would happen. And one of them was when you lose a tooth or you dream or it falls out, then you're going to have a death. So, well, anyway, mom went in the hospital and what happened happened. But um, so I... I I was really hesitant about getting it done, going to be going to get it checked out, and this and I wasn't in pain, and I take a lot of um, uh, supplements, and you know, and I don't eat meat. My diet's pretty decent, um, so finally I said I, I got to get this taken care of. So I, I, my, my daughter-in-law helped me find a holistic dentist. So and then that was like seven months ago. Finally, I called and I went, and um, I didn't wear my set because I'm not going to wear my feds to the uh, dentist's office. I'm sitting in the chair and fall off my head since I had my turban on. So when I got there, it was, it was a nice, comfortable place, but the people were so warm, so pleasant. They were mainly from uh, South America, our family from South America, uh, and um, and the, the one of the it was three dentists there, one was uh, Hindustan, she was Hindustani, and then two of them, one was a son and one was a, uh, a female. And the doctor and the other doctor, he was from Ukraine. So I, I greeted everyone. They were so very pleasant, very professional. But the warmth that they gave me, and when I went to shake the hand of the, the Hindustan sister, she grabbed me and hugged me. This is what I was telling her. I mean, she just hugged me. It's like she just knew I knew who I was, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, wow. I, I was still nervous, but they made me feel as comfortable as possible. But I mean, I really felt the genuine care and love, and that's something I haven't felt from professionals in a long, long time. Because I have a dentist that I've had over 30 years, but I just didn't want to go back to him because I know it was about the fear, and it's just like cold, no, you know, just cold person, but you know, professional. And that was what a feeling, what a feeling that was. And um, then I just got a card in the mail from them the other day, a handwritten card, thanking me and appreciating, obviously. You know the, the fiat, but uh, but uh, you know wishing me a speedy recovery and what have you. So I just want to share that, and um, it, it, it you know it's just something. It's, it's a lot of work we have to do, and we definitely have to. Um, you know, I'm gonna do my part, everything I can to just try to help the young mothers. Uh, and that's and that is where when you said Anna Anna A that uh, we have to. We have to do and uh, for ourselves because if I if I carry myself a certain way, the right way, act the right way, speak the right way, then that's gonna that's gonna influence someone. And I uh-huh. and I've seen that happen. Yeah, I've seen that happen in the past few months because I was in the store the other day and a modern European. She was just fascinated with what I had on, and I'm like, wow, what's wrong with these people? You know, I could, because I guess they're so used to seeing us in that. Uh, so-called black mindset, 
upset, and um, and uh, it's yeah. really something. It's really, really something. So I understood, and it was heartfelt everything you and the sister Roz said. And it is a lot of work, and some of the mothers are tough trying to get through. But uh, I won't. I'll, I'll do my. I'll do my part. Uh, that's that's my. I finally found my purpose in life, and I always knew something was wrong. And um, you know. I'll do, I'll do my yeah. part to help straighten it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's definitely worked on me. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> but with that, that's the biggest thing. You know, we also forget to mention, too, that we're talking nature, Uncle Natural. Natural. Nature. Because mm-hmm. we're natural people. And what has been implemented, you know, it is, it is, it is a whole different system of, of taking advantage, and it's called patriarchal as well, which goes against nature, which is why so much crap is going on. Um, mm-hmm. that, that will not stand. It's, it's all got to fall. It's got to go. And as Annie said, it's okay. You don't want to listen or whatever like that. Nature will take you out. Nature will take you out. And that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. So, man, yes, indeed. I can see it. I can feel it. I can see it, and I I can feel it, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, so thank you for being a demonstration you know, of what it is. Go ahead. You know, it's really interesting, and a lot of our people, they don't understand the magnitude of wearing Moorish garb. Because, number one, um, how you dress is a reflection of your culture and custom. And your culture and custom is how people identify your nationality. Mm -hmm. So now, if you're dressed in some type of Moorish garb, your family around the world, they will be able to recognize you. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I'm reading this book called, um, I think it's called White Gold. And it's the account of this uh, uh, modern European, Thomas Penlo, Penlo, or Pello. And what was really interesting is, um, you know, we talked about how they would capture the European ships and the English ships and the British ships. Spanish ship, Portuguese ship. They would snatch them right off of the sea because they, we were, we are the, we were the best navigators. Were past tense. We were the best navigators, so we were snatching them off of the sea, and the um, sultan would enslave all Christian. Modern Europeans, all, it's all Christians, period. They were, they were immediately enslaved. They were treated horrendously, converted to Islam, and wore the Moorish garb, you would be somewhat pardoned. The key there is to wear Moorish garb. And a lot of these, these modern Europeans, they refused, not, number one, they refused to convert to Islam. And number two, they refused to wear the Moorish garb. Hmm. And then what's well, crazy they, is, what's crazy yeah. is years later, modern Europeans used the Moors to convert to Christianity and give up their Moorish garb and take on European garb. That's right. So today, even though you have more who who have proclaimed or their nationality, they still look European because they're wearing European garb. So when your family is over here walking on the street, they don't know who the hell you are because you don't mm-hmm. wear the Moorish garb. So they don't they don't salute you or they don't hail you up or they don't they don't give you the greeting of peace. So they don't know who you are. But if you got That's on the so Moorish garbs and you're walking down the street, they will say, I still like them. 
so which true. Is, which is the greeting of peace. It is customary. In the Moorish in the Moorish culture and custom, you it is considered absolutely rude not to greet people. And the cultural greeting was Assalamu alaikum. But you will never get that greeting because they don't recognize you if you're wearing European bra. Mm-hmm. At least put on a turban or a bed so they can recognize you. And sometimes, and some, some, if women wear a turban and you running around, I'm just saying, you running around wearing pants, or or you don't have like the the top, the tunic, the long tunic. You know, because there's a certain there's a certain type of Moorish garb that, yeah, you know, it's like the the long shirt and the um uh, uh the pantaloons. They call it a salwa, but it's a certain type of garment. If you're wearing that, they can recognize you. Some type of Moorish garb, so they can recognize you. You'll be walking like I I just started I started experience because a lot more more is, is moving into the area where I am. So lately I noticed I'm zooming, you know, because I'm walking fast trying to get someplace and return. I'm zooming through the store. I hear Aslam Alaikum. I'm so shocked. I forget mm-hmm. what to say. I have to start yeah. practicing the response. Uh-huh, I'm going uh-huh. from my car to the store. I hear I saw I'm lesson. I'm I'm shocked. Yeah, I've experienced it. Yes, yes, yes. So you know, you hear, you will hear these greetings, and what the greetings will say is, "Oh, you family, I recognize you." But if you know, if you wear European garb, they ain't gonna recognize you. <laughs> I remember I was walking down the street um, in New, near New York one time, and it was summertime, and I think I was walking in the neighborhood with my my cousin, who you know somewhat embraces the, the culture and custom, but not not doesn't dress it. And the first time I was walking down the street, just walking with him, and somebody walked by and said, "Assalamualaikum," and I was shocked. And my cousin turned around and said, that's the first time anybody has ever said that. It must be because of you. <laughs> really something. Culture and custom <laughs> identifies your nationality, and that's why we have to embrace it even more, because modern Europeans are watching us. And, you can and they know. And they know. Say that again. You can feel the energies as well when you when you yeah. dress to your yeah. culture. When you, it's, it's a whole different That's energy right. when you step out. That modern Europeans, and I keep saying this all the time, modern Europeans watch us. They know what action will identify you as a more and what will not. Not what your papers say. It's how you demonstrate. It's wrong. And that's what we have to get. And that's what we have to embrace. And that's how we have to begin to move. Because I know anywhere I go, I remember when I was a young girl, I was in um, a department store. And these gang of women just like breathe by. And they were all completely covered. The only thing you could see was their eyes. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what they were. I didn't see not Even their hands, I think they had gloves on their hands. So you, you only saw their eyes. And that was it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that was part of the... Um, you know, it, and it, it, I'm, that's a part of the Moorish culture and cu- culture and custom. But 
And I know that that started for a very good reason, although it posed today, I believe, under oppressive, you know, measures. I, I could be wrong, you know. I've heard women say that, you know, they voluntarily dress in that fashion and some, you know, it's mandatory. But, you know, when I think of when I think of our privacy, I can embrace something like that. Everywhere you go mm-hmm. there's a camera. But yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and and I remember I was trying to compare it to something else and I kept forgetting what it was. And this Asiatic brother comes up behind me and says, I can't take pictures. And I was like, what? He's like, no, you can't take pictures. I didn't know you couldn't take pictures of things in the store. Um, But I I was like, fine. But what what it caused me to do was it caused me to reflect and look around the store, right? Now, they say, that you can't take pictures because of their privacy. But from you come up to their store door, they're taking pictures of you. <laughs> right? They're taking pictures of you. Once you once you come into the vicinity of their store, they're taking pictures of you. You're in the parking lot, they're taking mm-hmm. pictures of you. What about my privacy? So from that perspective, preserving my privacy, I can get down with dressing like that. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a right, I have a right to my privacy too, and you can't take it away. And pre- you can't take away my privacy, but preserve yours, a corporation. I don't think so. But that, that's my that's my thinking. Mm-hmm. That's just my thinking. I would do it for those reasons, but also, you know, that I I remember um, from my readings of long ago, you know, um, women dressed like that in extremely hot climates because, contrary to what people believe, it actually kept you cooler. And it's very comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember my dad telling me that because they worked they worked out in the um, yard and the farm a lot. But the long long sleeves that keeps keeps you cooler and the sun from you know burning you I guess more. But yeah. you know, like as far as dress goes, and you did mention it that the measures that are done now are for wrong reasons because it goes back to the ego or the insecurities of some of the husbands or sons or whatever of these women where, oh, I want you to dress like that because I don't want nobody to look at you. And that's not the reason that yep. any of that was established. And, you know, and, and so it's kind of like, you know, uh, it, it's been uh, misconstrued as, as that because they call them burqa. If you look up burqa, there was, there is yep. actually, uh, there's actually a abuse um, is used in an abusive manner. But I never looked at it from the perspective that you're saying because, uh, like you said, there's cameras everywhere. You're to be private, right? So um, that that's a, another perspective, another way of looking at it. I, just, I don't know. That, I don't know <laughs> that I would ever cover up the eyes and things, but you know, I might come to that. You know, and you talk about preser- preserving yeah. and protecting privacy. You might not have any other choice, man. Because remember what you said earlier. <laughs> You know, somebody have you, um, what do you call that, they have you whitewashed into some picture and it's an illusion that you was at a place that you weren't. <laughs> Next thing you know, that's right. You know, social media, you, you're involved in some ball because that's how crazy that stuff is. You know? Yep. So, yeah, it's real talk. You know? I mean, just violating people's privacy has become. It's become accepted. It's not lawful, but it is accepted. And the only reason that these things are accepted is because the people are silent. Yep. 
That's it. There's no other reason. People are silent, and so, you know, because, you know, they will do, they will do things um, only as long as nobody says anything. And, and, and that's evident. When you look in the records that, like, um, they, will, they will trample on your liberty until somebody speaks up. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how the, that's how they operate. And because nobody has spoken up, all manners of liberties have been trampled upon and have become commonly accepted. But that does not yep. mean it's law. That's right. And they use that word um like even nowadays, you know, when people go into these um venues and they say things like, um, "Oh, let's let's talk about the press. These are the precedents that has been set. Precedents doesn't mean law. Precedents means that they did it, nobody disputed it, and so now they're using it as a yardstick. And they're saying they're not even saying this is this is the common. And some of them they say, some of them they do say this." It's commonly accepted. It might be commonly accepted, and it might be a precedent, but it's not law. And that's all that counts. Yeah. That's all that counts. Is, is it law? No. Oh, okay. Well, I don't care if 50 million people have accepted it. It's not law. Throw it out. Just like the, um, the travel ban. If if people read the travel ban language, they talked about commonly accepted and precedent, but they never talked about the law. That's right. Mhm. And it's the same thing. And the same thing is in the um, language regarding um, identification and national yep. identification, and, and that which has been commonly accepted and they tell you but it's not right. it's not a lawful thing it's just that you know we commonly it's, accept it yes, nobody disputed nobody, it nobody has offered any national ID in place of it so okay we'll accept these things that's what they're saying yeah that's, that's right. all they're saying and, and it doesn't right. change the law Writing it, if you should apply it, it still it still stands. That's right. So yeah. Mm-hmm. And believe me, and Carol, Sister Carol knows, and you know, I know, and maybe some others. If you will apply the law, you will find it works. That it it's still long. Works. Yes. True. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. But you have to have it on in you and your dial plate and actually know it and therefore able to navigate from that point with anything else that might come back at that may be said afterwards. But you find it it it's it, it, oh the law don't work. No, you don't work. Because you know, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You don't right. really have in your bl- blood I'm gonna say in your blood what I'll use in your dial plate. Dial plate meaning right on your breastplate that you can dial it up. And it's not in your blood. It's not in your spirit. You don't have to have the spirit of law and the knowledge and then apply that and watch and see if you don't get a different reply. And that's, I think that's the gauge. I think that's the gauge. They know all they don't talking about. But anyway, moving forward, that's a law class. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Sister Carol, thank you so much for your comment. <laughs> and thank you. Peace and love. All right. Peace and love. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Got another caller, 443-376. You're on the air. Islam, um, I am Hassan Ghazi Obey uh, at Morocco. How, how, how are the mothers? I I didn't want to say anything except excellent broadcast. 
thank you. All praise to mommy, Islam, peace and love. <laughs> All righty. Um, we don't have any more callers. Uh, if anyone has a comment, question, concern, press one on your telephone down. And if you um, had a question and it was already answered, press one on your telephone and you will come out of queue. Mm-hmm. You, um, okay, we still have somebody in the queue. Uh, let's see. Caller 954-400, did you have a question, comment, concern? Oh, no, I'm I'm sorry. Um, I'm I, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of the queue. I thought I pulled, I thought All I right. um, All right, pushed. this is what you do. Once, once you hear that you have been muted, then you press one. All right. Okay. So I'm mute. Okay. Then right. Thank you. Um, yep. All right. All right. So if we have anyone who has a comment, question, concern, press one on your telephone dial, and you will go into queue. And let's see. If not, we'll end the broadcast. Oh wow! Long time. Mhm. It well, was a man. lot to think about. <laughs> a lot to really reflect on, and and that's what's needed in reflection. So, um, it's all good. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you know, we can talk all day long about well, how will will people uh uh uh. uh you know, uh, effectuate this after they chew over it, um, you know, and that's really their choice. And the thing is, is that, it, it, like you said, it doesn't matter. Nature will take its place with you if you don't because this is all the portions of force, being forced to make changes, you know what I'm saying? And um, and you're just, you know, people are going to find, excuse me, as a prophet said, people are going to find themselves where they can solve their problems best. So, that's the way that it is. But if you really want the answer to the problem, to the situation, or to the salvation of humanity, you know, we just gave it to you. And if you can't yep. go back to that square, to that square of which you were born on, <laughs> then stop looking for um, a re- resolution for anything because it's not going to happen because you are in That's dishonor right. of your own self. You know, by by being in dishonor of your um, you know, your mothers and fathers, and therefore dishonor of yourself. It's not gonna happen. So if that's what you really want, there it is. Oops, there it is. Now what you gonna do? Um, you know, some people just don't. Like we know that we've been given a. We all know we've been misinformed, miseducated, and all these things. Well, been told forever. Here we are finding out certain truths that were missed in the education system, per se, about the truth of uh, the the true history, the true true heritage, you know, like who would ever believe that, you know, we modern Europeans are the first slaves on the plantations on the North American land. Who would believe that if you weren't told that in any way, shape, form, or fashion coming up? But it was planned that way to switch and usurp the position. So here you are just getting that. Now, what we were talking about, some people going to lose or not be able to keep up with the pace or the energy, that's what this is. Some people cannot receive this true information and will hold on to the illusion because the place in your brain, in your mind, where the truth, where this department of uh, whatever that department of history or facts are, whatever topic it is, it already has some bull crap sitting in it. And you're having a hard time making the dissemination. And it's like rewiring or misfiring 
of the wiring system of the brain, which is electric, by the way, and you having all of these miswires and, and, and misfires and all kinds of stuff, and which is why you need to go somewhere and mediate yourself. You need to go somewhere and what they call meditate, or you need to go somewhere and have discipline placed in order. Sit by yourself. That's all meditation is. All meditation is is to be able to do this thing called soundless sound, called thought. That is a two-way transmission, not a one-way transmission. Because the, and that's what you're not able to be tapped into um, with all the stuff that's been put, the junk that's been put in your your way and the obstacles that are here, right? So you meditate or think is another word, meditate, mediate, become your own medium of thought and think with the soundless sound, not with not with you, your homeboy sound or your homegirl sound. You center yourself into that position and do this thing called thinking, which is soundless sound, which is not a one-way transmission. It is not a one-way transmission. So therefore, you sit quiet and you think and you put your thought out there and watch and see if the answer doesn't come at, at simultaneously. While you're doing that, you're putting it out. This is why. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall open. And all of this, these things, that depends on how far you're going in your thinking and in your astral traveling, per se, where you might see a door and need to knock on it. But if it's just you centering and thinking, you ask the question that you want to answer to and watch and see and hear, hear soundlessly with the soundless sound and the vibration of energy. Watch the answer come. Listen to your inner self um, as you do this, and the answer shall appear. But you can't do it if you don't take the moment to sit with yourself and to uh, do this transmission of simply, simply of thinking because the answer you already have. And if you don't have it, you do, well, you do have it because we're all part, we, all, we are all, all one part of the universal mind, period. We are scattered, yes. We have been misfired and all this stuff is going on. But what are you becoming a one with? You know, oh, I'm going to become one with the all. All right, we're all, it's one, one. I say one universal mind bank, period. So if you forgot the answer to the question that your soul so desires to have, Sit in quiet and ask and listen to the soundless sound give you that answer. Now you have to figure out, and maybe you need to do that before you wake up out of your meditation and start moving again. You need to figure out, well, where do I put this information? i got to kick some other stuff out because what the answer doesn't fit what I have been misinformed and told and living on as a basis. Oh, all right, then you're having your exorcism and your baptism or what have you, whatever however you want to call it. And you can do all of that by simply sitting in meditation and dealing with the soundless sound because, as I said, one universal mind bake. And that's why it is said that man is mind because man is mind. So tap into the man self. Or the, uh, or the mind, right, and ask the question and sit still long enough to get the answer. Now, what happens when you don't like the answer? Well, then you ain't really meditating because if it doesn't become a transforming experience for you, you ain't really tapped in. You're not really sincerely asking. You don't really want to know. And so, therefore, it's not even like don't come to the table. You can't get to the table because you're not going to be able to sit alone and listen in the first place. So when that answer comes, it's a reflection. Man's business is about reflection, right? And it's a resolution, and life is about resolution. It's not about blaming or this 
or putting the blame on someone else or whining and crying about the obstacle that was put in your way. Let me tell you, the whole thing of the obstacles that are put in your way are the seven guiding planets and the seven eyes of our lives, they call it. Those are the obstacles that have been in your way. And you don't see that, then you can't see nothing else because those are the obstacles that you will not have once you go to the soul plane, you bypass those seven uh, um, uh, 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 planets that put obstacles or energy in your way. You are here to get through those obstacles because they're meant for you so that you can become one with the all. And if that is what you say, it's all about. So when you surpass that, that's the faith, you know, because people always say, well, if it's already, you know, if it's already planned out what, I, what my life is and my destiny, why, why should we bother? Let me tell you why. Because destiny is one thing. You're destined to go through this. But the uh, fate is the obstacles that are put in the way for you for, and why, you might ask, why? Is it in my way? Because that's what you need to learn. That's why it is there. And once you learn that lesson and overcome those quote unquote obstacles, then you may be ready to become one because you are in a wholeness. Why are you in a wholeness? Because the specific lesson that you came here uh, or the specific obstacle that in the cycle of time was in place for you to catch you coming in, they're there for you to learn. That's why. It's a cycle, right? It's a cycle. It's a cipher. That's what it is all about. So when you try to ignore that and you wish to ignore that, then not go into the sound of sound, where it, which is energy and vibration, and open your mind up so that the truth can come in and make herself at home, all right, and therefore cleanse your mind first because, see, you have to free your mind. I was just talking to some other sister about that, and she was demonstrating and saying what probably many people say. I just want to be free. I just want to be free. And I told her, and she realized it and said, you know what, I understood what you said now. I said, well, your mind got to be free first. Because if you free your mind, your ass will follow. It doesn't go the other way around. They got you thinking it goes the other way around, that in your physical body, which is this plane that we're on called Earth, called Terra, that if you achieve all of this stuff and it's all about the physical, you know, then you cool. No, it's not, because that goes directly against man is mind and manifesting into the flesh, and therefore on uh, uh, and onto this earth plane to to do whatever it is you're supposed to be doing, which again is in your chart, all right? So it goes against that. Everything has been reversed. And the premise of where we're starting from, which isn't really the start, but we can use it as we have when you're dealing with the uh, 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 really Lynch, which is all, all about, all about the woman, all about the person, the woman. You've got to see that. Look at it again if you have to, if you don't. And it's not about you, but you're being the sons. It's about using you because because it's about suppressing her. And you are her son. She manifests you. So, therefore, she's messed up. You are, even if your ego don't allow you to see it. So, I go back to say, if you can't meditate and detach yourself to the universal mind bank of which you are and come when, come from, then get the answer there and keep looking for it somewhere else, then you are going to be in trouble and therefore not be able to stay, take some of the things that we're saying because they sound so off the chain. Well, I don't want to do that and I want to dress like this and I want to be like this. You are following a system that has been systematically planned to bring you down and keep you there and then take or usurp your position, which, which if you are usurped, 
Now, hear this. If you are usurped while you're on this physical plane with a specific wiring chart on something that you need to do and you are not following it, then that means that you got to come back and do it again. You're not. You will not escape these lessons. So that means that some of you and some of us are here, and we find that the lesson that we were supposed to have gotten is really, really, really more difficult because the, 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 the progression of the suppression of nature has moved on a couple of generations later, but you still got to get that lesson, and it seems as if it just doesn't fit with what's happening now. What's happening now is the illusion, and you are like, it's like, oh, I missed that movie, or I missed that, that lesson. Well, it was two generations ago that you missed it, or three generations ago, but it, the universe don't give a damn when you missed it. You got to get it. So your lesson may seem as if it's way out of place with everybody else, and it just might be, because we got to get the lessons and catch up and go down the narrow road. I've said it before. You know, Dottie went down that little yellow brick road, right? Go down that little seemingly lonely road, and only when you go down it shall you find others in the same direction. And then you understand why you were here to do what you had to do, even if it wasn't the lesson of the person next to you. We keep putting ourselves into, well, I want to do it like you did it. No, you can't do it like the other person. You got to do it the way it's meant for you. So I rambled on, but we had a few, few minutes. But I think it's important that we understand that, you know, and how the astrology does affect that, the astrologic does affect it, and how this is greater than the illusion of being in the physical form. Greater than that, because you will return here if you didn't get it. And when you return, you will even be more of a misfit or you'll feel like you are more of a misfit because your lesson wasn't learned the other cycle ago, but they still got to get, get done. I'm saying to you, it's going to become stranger and stranger to you as they continue with this system that they're implementing on this illusion this illusion platform here on Earth. What they spread around don't matter. It's a simulation um, uh, 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 platform. And if you don't get your lesson, you're going to see more. You more. You're going to see more and more like you, like you are out of order or that you don't fit more and more. As the system of planning that they have going down, that they that shall continue as long as they, as as you keep propping it up because you won't break free. And break free means in the mind first. See how the cycle goes? So as that occurs, you know, with all the stuff they say they're getting ready to bring in and do this, and Anna Eden and I, we were talk, you were talking to me about how they're talking about some states are going to break away from the, from the union, proving that the USA is a union, and then they might have these passports where you can't go from so-called state, which is really sell territory to the other, without the... Uh, driver's license, which is now going to be a passport. Now, that's some crazy stuff, but that's what they want to put in place. That means you have to be more, more aware of your liberties, your human rights. You, you, you have to be more of it, not less, but more of it. So it's the same thing. If you don't get it, you're going to just be traversed right down into those rabbit holes of an illusion as opposed to connecting yourself with the universal mind bank and getting the answers that you want and creating your reality as your illusion or as your reality as you traverse on Terra. All right. Well, that concludes this broadcast. Make sure and check us out Tuesday for Principles of Nationality, Wednesday, more Terrace Engine History, School and Thursday, Sons of Our Lives. Peace and love. Peace and love. It's love. Mm.
Oh, mm-hmm. 